Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I wanted to take a look at this effect that is currently trending and I think is pretty interesting. And I wanted to show you how one might approach doing it in motion. So let's make a start on this. So first things first, let's check up on our project setup. So 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, a duration of four seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import this asset, very dirty glass. And this is really the, the trick to getting this all working, to get a nice texture that's going to create the, the effect. And this is particularly good for that. So I'm going to just quickly add a color and levels, and then just bring this way down and even crunch in the black like that. This is going to be a sort of background texture. Then I'm going to make a new group, top of everything. I'm going to use the text tool to type some text and I'll be back when it's done. It doesn't matter what it says. It doesn't really matter what font you use. I've used a nice fat font because these tend to work better with this effect. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group above this group, object new group, and I'm going to put this group into it. And then I'm going to take my dirty glass and I'm going to hold down the option key, drag it out to form a new group at the top here. And I'm going to turn that group off. So then I'm going to come to this group here and I'm going to add the key effect that's going to make this look nice. And that is blur and compound blur. A compound blur is very interesting because it's a blur that uses an external image to determine which bits of which are bits are blurred and which bits are not. So we're going to grab this new dirty glass and drag it in there. And then we're going to crank that amount up to say 300. And now we're not seeing very much and that's because we need to adjust the levels on this. So I'm going to bring the whites up again. You can see immediately how that's affecting the image. And we've pretty much got the effect just with one filter. And we can crank the white level to make it really intense and so on. But we can make this effect even more extreme. I'm just going to turn off that compound blur for the time being. And then I'm going to come to filters and distortion. And we're going to look for glass distortion. And again, we're going to use that dirty glass as the source. And you can see we've got that characteristic glass distortion. And we can adjust the amount to taste. Uh, maybe a little bit of softness, something like that. But the one thing you'll notice is that the distortion is not actually following the source image properly. And it's getting a bit squashed. So what we can do is we can come to this group and we can switch it to fixed resolution. And now you can see that the distortion is responding correctly to the underlying image. So let's make this even more extreme. Let's just turn off this glass distortion for a moment and let's come to filters and let's come to distortion and bump map. And again, let's use that same image as the source. I want a direction of say 180 and let's just play with that amount a little bit more. So like 1.6 is pretty good. And you can see how effective that is. So then what we can do is we can actually add all these together. Uh, we just need to get the order right, I think. So I'm going to move the glass distortion above the bumper map. Let's turn that on. That looks pretty nice, I think. And then I'm going to take that compound blur and move it above the other two and turn that on. And you can see that the effect of those three together is really pretty nice. So we can adjust each of them to taste. But I do think this compound blur is giving a really nice result. But I want you to notice that changing the order of these filters by, for example, putting the compound blur beneath the glass distortion, like so, gives us a slightly different result. So now it's looking like more glassy and less sort of frosted. I think I want to go for this kind of super frosted look. So then if we grab our text and we move it around, you can see how nicely everything is interacting with this technique. We've got all that distortion happening exactly as we want it. And that compound blur really does make it look nice, I think. And just one more thing you could try is to take this group here and add an image mask. 
and again use the dirty glass as this source and switch to luminance and then uh, let's just invert it and you can see that the result of that is that we get these nice sort of streaks dirty streaks on top of everything and you know if you want to adjust the intensity of that you can add to the image mask a levels and you can see we can just kind of grunge it up a huge amount or we could go the other way crush the blacks and we could just make it a little bit fainter so another interesting trick you can try there so what you do with it from this point on is really up to up to you but you've got the basis of the of the idea and hope you can do something interesting and as i say this is a look that's very much trending at the moment so thanks very much indeed for watching see you again soon